Howdy folks, this is Steve Bodner, Fire Weather Program Leader at the National Weather Service in Spokane. And if you got five minutes, I uh, put together a quick educational video to let you know about a new tool that we have here at our office for the upcoming fire season and future fire seasons to come. The new tool is the ability to tag a red flag warning with the phrase particularly dangerous situation or PDS. So what is a PDS red flag? PDS red flag it gives us the ability to amplify exceptional fire weather conditions considered rare and very impactful to the public and firefighters. The objective is to heighten the public and fire agency awareness for these rare fire weather conditions which could lead to very unusual fire danger and fire spread for any new starts or even existing fires. We issue red flags multiple times throughout the season, not uncommon. By definition, a red flag means critical fire weather conditions are expected and can contribute to extreme fire behavior. If we were to utilize the PDS tag, this is where we want you to consider this as the NWS is jumping up and down, we're waving our arms, we're trying to get your attention. This is a rare event and historically has resulted in the most extreme fire behavior and impacts to our communities. PDS red flags will be a combination of fuels and meteorology. In order to consider a PDS red flag, first, we must have record or near record dryness levels. Typically, this is going to occur in July, August, or the early fall because most of our live fuels, such as grasses and shrubs, are still curing in June. The fuels are one component. The second component is going to be the weather, and we're going to need a high-end wind event, generally rare type wind event that doesn't happen very often. And the third component will be the low humidity, though we found the humidity component is going to have the lowest correlation. Some other notes about the PDS red flags. This is not a new product. The existing red flag is unchanged. The PDS wording will be highlighted in the narrative of the red flag warning. It can also be a short duration of a long duration red flag event. So for example, if we have a red flag out from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., we may just have PDS conditions from 2 p.m. through 6 p.m., such as when a dry cold front passage is making its way through. It could also be a single zone of a red flag, a set of zones, or the entire red flag. So if we have six zones in a red flag warning, three of those zones may be in a PDS red flag. We do consider PDS red flags to be rare and based on our research should occur typically every five or more years apart from each other, but there's going to be those situations where these may not occur for every seven to ten years, or potentially they may occur every two years. Not all extreme weather events will have a PDS. So there will be high impact fire weather events with fast moving fires and possibly structures lost that do not have PDS tags. PDS red flags are going to be reserved for those exceptional 5 to 10 percent top tier red flags based on our established criteria, which we'll take a look at. In an example, if we go back to 2008, we had extreme fire weather conditions through the Okanagan Valley and northeast Washington, including the area of Kettle Falls, where we had wind gusts greater than 50 miles an hour. Fuel conditions in those areas um, were dry enough such that if we had this tool back then, a PDS may have been warranted. If we go further south though into the Spokane area, uh, there was also a red flag out for that event. Um, and we had a fire that went through the Spokane Valley and, and we did lose several structures from that fire. But the fuel conditions weren't near record dryness and so that's a situation where we had a, a fairly high impact event as far as the community and structures loss, um, but may have not fit the thresholds. These were the events that we used to establish our thresholds. So it started with the 91 firestorm, 
And then uh, fast forwarding to last to 2023 uh, with the, our Gray and Oregon Road fire, and just to kind of point out, you can see the amount of years that were that occurred between those events. So it's going back in time. There was a longer duration between these higher impact events, and the trends have been for them to get shorter apart. On this slide here uh, what you see on the left is what's called our fire weather matrix so this is what forecasters utilize for decision processes for making for putting out red flags we have wind speed on the left relative humidity on the right and then on the right is our thresholds for pds red flags so i'm going to start uh, with the minimum pds prerequisites there and so conditions lasting three plus hours uh, as far as our fuel component, we're looking for 1,000 hour dead fuel moistures of 10% or less, ERCs, 90th percentile or higher, but probably most importantly would be the amount of days since our last wetting rain or a tenth of rain. Uh, minimum 30 days, uh, but most of these events, going back and looking at them, uh, it was more in that 60 to 90 day time frame of when the last wetting rain fell. Wind speeds have to be 30 miles per hour or greater with gusts of greater than 40 miles an hour. There are some exceptions when we do have extremely dry conditions of RHs less than 10%. And our minimum thresholds for relative humidities is just less than 30%. Going back to the top there where it says special situations, um, that's where if we had, uh, again, those record fuel dryness conditions out there, um, but wind gusts greater than 50 and RH is even higher, less than 35%. Uh, that was one of our events that fit that category. So when we plot those five events, uh, this is what it looks like on our matrix. As you can see, it doesn't really fit perfectly into the bottom right of the matrix where we would have the driest and windiest conditions. Over here on the left was our 91 firestorm. And then if we move up all the way up here to the top right, this was actually the 2023 fires uh, that moved through Medical Lake and Elk, Washington. The actual product for a red flag would look like this. So on the right is a non-PDS red flag. On the left, the top narrative is where we would really emphasize the particularly dangerous situation wording. That's where you would also find which hours would be in it if there were just particular hours and if there were um, particular zones that were in it or not. So if we did have zones that were not in a PDS, most likely that would be broken up into uh, different paragraphs. So the ones with the PDS would be highlighted with PDS and the ones without it would not. And then down below in the impacts and precautionary actions. That's where you would find a lot of more enhanced wording when we do have a PDS red flag out, uh, talking about extreme fire behavior, rapid growth, um, having that preparation for evacuation notices from emergency managers and law enforcement. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email or you can also email Charlotte Dewey, our warning coordination meteorologist. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this and have a great fire season. Thanks.